Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen and in this video I'm going to talk about how you improvise on the song Solar. So I improvised and transcribed a solo on Solar and uh, I'm going to go over what I'm playing and it's going to give you some insight in what I use when I'm using melodic minor, both as the altar scale but also on tonic minor chords. And uh, I'm also going to talk a little bit about uh, trisome substitution and some other arpeggio ideas and some other things that I use when I'm soloing. Let's first check out the solo. <laughs> So let's just first talk a little bit about Solar, uh, maybe a little bit of history also, because Solar is usually credited to Miles Davis. Uh, and in fact, I think part of the melody is written on his tombstone as well. But it was in fact written by a guitar player called Chuck Wayne, and it was just one of the many pieces that Miles uh, took credit for, even though he didn't write it. Uh, the form of Solar is uh, 12 bars, and it's in C minor. And in fact, it is just a reharmonized or decorated uh, C minor blues. Just to quickly cover the form, C minor for two bars, then a 2-5 to F, so G minor, C7, F major, then two bars of F major 7, then we turn the F into an F minor, so F minor, and that becomes a 2-5 to E flat, then you get the same idea, so you turn E flat into E flat minor, and you get a quick 2-5 to D flat, and then from the D flat major 7 we go to D half diminished, G7, and then back to the first C minor again. So that's the form. Um, the melody, because it uses a major seven, is really something that we kind of use uh, melodic minor on really often. So it's very typical for that. This first line is on the C minor chord, so the tonic minor, and it's of course coming out of melodic minor. And I'm using the arpeggio from the third of that chord, so the third of C minor is of course E flat, and the diatonic arpeggio there is an E flat major 7 uh, sharp 5, so that's this arpeggio. I'm using it in two octaves, so the first one I'm playing with a leading note here, and then up as a triplet. And then from there I go down to the sharp 5 again, and then use that to shift up, and then I play actually the same arpeggio one more time, just an octave higher. This time it's just it's just as eight notes, and then the scale run down to really emphasize the major six, which then becomes the nine on the G minor seven. And I think for this, the things that I use a lot for these tonic minor situations, so the the sharp major seven sharp five sound, uh, and also the sort of non-diatonic version of this, which is the one that uses the flat five, so the. It's also in a picture I use quite often. Uh, another one that's also really useful to have in, in your fingers is to have a C minor 6, which we of course don't really practice our, or at least I don't, and I think most people don't practice their uh, diatonic 6 chords, uh, but they are also just inversions of the normal diatonic 7th uh, chords. So in this case, uh, C minor 6 is just an A half diminished arpeggio. So. And that's also a really useful thing to sort of use for, for lines. Uh. So the second line is rhythmically a little bit more complicated and uh, it's on the 2 5 to F major. So the first part of it is on the G minor and that's just a, again, a picture from the third, which is something that I just use really, really a lot. And uh, not something that's really exotic. Uh, and special to me, I think it's something that most people actually use. If you check out enough solos, you'll see the same. So uh, we start with this sweep of a B flat major seven arpeggio, and then it moves on to a trill on the A. So we get and a leading note, and then we go to the C seven, and here I'm using uh, this part is actually in sixteen notes, and then I shift into eight note triplets, and on the C seven. I'm using a diminished dominant sound, so like a C7 with a 13 and a flat 9. And uh, the line I'm playing is... So I'm really emphasizing the 13 and then up to the flat 9. 
because the 13 and the flat 9 in a combination is really sort of what's typical for the diminished sound over a dominant and um, in this case the way you get that into the into a line when you're playing on a C7 is uh, I'm using an upper structure triad and that's the easiest way to do that and the upper structure triad that I use for this is an A major triad so that's this part of the arpeggio that you can also check out that I'm actually playing and then I resolve that to the fifth of uh, F major 7 uh, I'm sort of chaining together a few arpeggios uh, and in this case I'm using first an F major triad, I'm using it as a, almost like this sort of cold train pattern, this one, two, three, five pattern on an F major seven. Uh, but I'm using that F major, then you get a C major triad, and then that's again uh, chained together with an F major seven arpeggio, but then play descending with an added uh, nine in there, and the ending on the nine. Also very typical for sort of bebop phrasing um, is to end on the three end. So I'm not ending on the beat, I'm ending on an off beat. And it's the high note in the phrase also. So the line on the F minor 7 sounds like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing a triplet rhythm of a... I'm just using the, the notes of a shell voicing, so an A flat major 7 shell voicing. And um, I'm using triplets in groups of four, because triplets are naturally grouped in three, so if you group them in something else, then that gives you sort of a nice uh, rhythm that's moving on top of the original beat, and that's kind of what I'm using here. Uh, I have made some videos on grouping triplets in groups of four. Uh, in general, it's something I would su suggest you check out. For these medium tempos, it's really an, a nice thing to sort of break up your eight note lines with. Uh, the way I'm using it here is maybe a little bit advanced. This is, of course, an improvised solo, uh, so I'm kind of starting in a in a weird place, so it's not really sort of a, a, a triplet grouping 101 example in, in that sense. If you were to do that, so just to demonstrate that, uh, so if we have one, two, three, four... So if you have that kind of idea, then you can start working with that. You can of course play other arpeggios than just this, this one. Uh, and that is essentially what I'm doing in the solo, except I'm starting in a little bit of strange place. Uh, and I'm also not playing the last one all the way through. Which is also, I think with most, thi most things that you play, I mean you practice them so that you really know what you're doing, but in the end it's going to be something that you hear and you're just going to place it in your solo uh, much more freely and maybe not sort of with the, the correct ending and the correct beginning. At least I think I, I really try to do that with most of the stuff that I work on, and I think this is just an example of that. <laughs> So this is of course the line on the B flat 7 going to E flat major and uh, the arpeggio that I'm using on the B flat 7 is in fact an E7 so but I'm just playing it in in a sort of uh, well playing it in thirds in fact because I'm just skipping around the notes so and then what I'm also doing is I'm not resolving on the one so I'm still playing the E7 arpeggio on the one of the uh, of the E flat major and then resolving it, the eighth note after that. And then from there we get, which is of course just sort of a, basically just a C minor arpeggio used on the E flat major seven. So for the E flat minor seven, A flat seven to D flat major, pretty much just thinking of the E flat minor because the important thing that happens here um, or at least the thing that I sort of tend to focus on here is that we go from E flat major to E flat minor. Uh, so melodically that's kind of what I tend to focus on and that's also what's happening here. So I'm using this line which is sort of an enriched E flat minor 7 arpeggio and clearly just emphasizing the 7th of that one so not pretty much ignoring the A flat 7. Which of course you can do anytime you have a fast 2-5 uh, you can always experiment or try to figure out if, if you can just ignore one of the two chords and it will sort of vary from time to time what works better to just stick with the minor or stick with the dominant. Uh, very often if you have like a cadence to the two then uh, it makes more sense to focus on the two and sometimes because it's a really strong resolution from the five then it makes more sense to focus on the five. So there's 
Uh, there's not really any sort of strict rule on that, but you will get away with just using one of them. And in this case, I think sort of the, the stronger uh, sound that you want to get across is that E flat major turns to E flat minor, and then that's why I'm I'm thinking like this. And then I'm resolving to the major seven on the D flat major seven, and then I have a small sort of F minor uh, line. So that's and. I think this is also something that's very typical for my playing. Uh, it's not sort of a really huge example of it here because it's only four different notes, but uh, what I'm... Actually, it's only three different notes. If I could count, then that would help as well. Uh, so, to use the, the, the minor pentatonic scale from the third of a major seven chord is a sound that sounds... Uh, that I really like, so I use that really often. So if I have a D flat major, it's quite likely that I'll be playing some. And when you're thinking about these pentatonic scales, they make them make it a lot easier to get these sort of chordal harmony type uh, sounds. And just the sound of the pentatonic scale already will give you a little bit of that sound, and it will just sound different from playing sort of a normal uh, major type. Uh, scale, so if you're playing major or if you're playing uh, Lydian, it doesn't really matter too much because it's just going to be a completely different sound from uh, So that's kind of what I like about that sound So this last 2-5, because this is a 2-5 going back to the top again, so that's D half diminished G7 back to C minor 6 and uh, here I'm kind of doing the opposite of what I did with the E flat minor seven, A flat seven, where I'm only focusing. In that one, I'm only focusing on the two chords, so on the E flat minor. And here, because we're at the end of the form and we need to point back to the tonic at the beginning of the form, then clearly the important chord here is the G seven. And uh, you could argue that the line I'm playing also would fit. The beginning of it also kind of fits on on the D after minutes, but um, this is maybe also just from knowing my own playing. This is really just a G7 altered line to me, and um, the line is sort of built around this A flat minor major arpeggio, and then I've added this trill in front of it, and then some extra notes down to the G, and then I resolve that line to the ninth on the C minor six. That was a chorus of my solo on the song Solar. Uh, I hope you can use the transcription and the explanation to get some ideas for your own soloing. Uh, of course, now you have an idea about what arpeggios I use and also a little bit how I use them and some of the rhythms that I use. Uh, if you want to check it out, you can also try and practice it on the backing track that I used on this. That backing track is also on YouTube and I'll link to it in the description of this video. Uh, if you want to download a PDF of the examples that I went over here, so also the transcription, then you can go to uh, my website in the article that's accompanying this video there's a PDF download of uh, the transcription and some of the examples. Uh, when you're on my website, you can also subscribe to my newsletter. If you do that, then uh, you'll receive uh, an ebook, a free ebook with uh, 15 251 legs with altered dominance. Uh, if you have any comments or questions or suggestions for things I should do a video on, then uh, feel free to let me know. You can comment on the video or you can connect with me on social media. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus, so there's enough places to reach me. Uh, if you, I don't know, you probably realize that there are actually two choruses to this solo. And um, if you want to check out the other chorus that I played, which uh, I also transcribed, then uh, you can of course join my Patreon community because that's going to be part of the lesson extras. Uh, for each of these lessons that I make every week, I make an extra video with some more examples and some other info, or maybe another perspective on what I'm doing the lesson on. And uh, that's available for uh, not my lowest, but my second lowest tier on uh, Patreon supporters. Uh, there's also a link to my Patreon uh, in the description, so you can check that out. And if you really want to check out that second chorus, then uh, you can of course sign up for my Patreon and support my videos and help me uh, keep making all these videos. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and uh, on to next week.